Hey everyone, Stephen here from Be a Python Dev. This is the second time I'm making this video because the first time my microphone switched. Hopefully this time around it'll go a little smoother. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about how to make money by selling your Python applications and the process of doing this. And this video idea came to me because I am going to be creating a YouTube application that will hopefully help people be able to manage multiple channels and automate the process of uploading to multiple channels. And while thinking about how I'm going to do this, I came up with the process that I'm going to follow. And I thought about sharing that to you all. This will allow you to think through the process of creating a application that can be sold, the important parts around doing this, and how you can create and distribute this application to create a passive income stream. Uh, the first thing that's involved in creating a Python application that you can sell is actually coming up with an idea that sells. To be able to do this, you should have an intimate knowledge of a workflow that you can identify what can be coded, meaning something with a lot of manual work involved in doing it, such as uploading videos to multiple YouTube channels. If you're doing that using the YouTube UI, you have to click back and forth a lot. Uh, you have to upload things in multiple tabs and write out a bunch of things, and it gets kind of tedious. With the application idea I have, uh, it will definitely save people time and simplify the process of uploading to multiple channels at once. As long as the code that you're writing takes less time to make the program than it does to repeatedly do this manual task, then you should do it. And if it's something that a lot of other people are doing as well, then it makes sense to make it an application that you can sell and then find a way to distribute that so people can find your application and buy it and get the same value that you're getting, such as with my case where Lots of people are uploading videos and creating content creation plans. Uh, if I find a way to create a program that works for me, I can then additionally uh, think about the customer's use cases, slightly modify my code to be more generic to other customers' needs, and then that should allow me to sell it for their use cases as well. As I was just mentioning, uh, simplify your customer's pain points as well. To create an application that you can actually sell, if it's only something that just applies to you, if it's very specific to you, uh, other people aren't gonna buy it. Meaning you need to think about the use cases that other customers are doing and how to create code around that that will simplify things for them as well. Ultimately for this program to sell, it's gonna need to create value for the potential customers that you're targeting. Initially, I'm trying to simplify how I interact with YouTube, meaning that I am my own customer. And because of that, I can think through things that would apply to me that might also apply to other streamers and content creators and deliberately think through their use cases in addition to my own so that while I'm creating the design to my application, I can extend it a little bigger in scope. This way, the more value that my program creates, the higher target price I can sell, uh, the better feedback I'll get from customers and the more I can actually grow this into a potential like larger application and maybe even a bigger business around it if I can genericize it to apply to other platforms as well as other like content creation. Ultimately though, think small. Uh, think if this application can scale bigger. Uh, if it can, if it can apply to a lot of different customers' use cases, then that is a good sign that this is an application that can sell and is worth investing time into. Which brings me back to another point. If this is a very small application that would take hundreds of hours to create and it only applies to like one very kind of small niche, it might not really be worth doing then. If that is the situation, then you need to think how you can broaden the scope or how you can reduce the time to actually solve that problem for yourself and the other maybe hundreds of people that you sell it to. Again, if you can create this application in 20 hours and depending on how you value your time, if you do sell it to 100 customers, if that one use case is so specialized that you can put a high price point on it, then it might still be an advantageous application to create and sell. After you've thought through the ideas, how you can grow the application and scale it to potential other use cases and customers, and you've thought through the customer's needs, ultimately then you'll go through the process of developing the application. So you will design out those use cases Think through the code that will be needed for that. Uh, again, having a good upfront design will allow you to save time in the actual development process and you'll likely come out with a more sophisticated application. Uh, while you're going through that design, ensure that the customers will understand how to use your program, meaning what kind of documentation will be around this use case, uh, what kind of help messages will there be within the application as far as a CLI or a UI, 
Uh, if there is a UI, how will customers interact with the components in the UI? Uh, like what will the buttons look like? When you click on a button, how will the application change to let the user know that something's happening? And also make sure that you code it in a way that you give immediate feedback of what the application is doing. So if they did something and the application did something right, then let, let them know with like a big clear green text box success, this worked, or a big like red pop-up or something, or a big red text line in the CLI that this didn't work, this is why it didn't work. These are the steps that you can take to fix the action, uh, such as if the API failed because the network was down, then tell them to check their network. If the API failed because the credentials were incorrect in a certain file, then tell them to double check the credentials in their credential.json file or whatever. Uh, make sure the customer has a good user experience when they're interacting with the application. Uh, that way they're less likely to ask for refunds. They're more likely to refer your application to other people. And overall, it'll just give you a good brand recognition. You get good reviews and that will help you potentially market your application more in the future. As you're writing the code, make sure you use like private source code control to track the changes. Uh, try starting with just a Git repository locally, and then you can extend that to a private repository or AWS uh, code repository, I think is what they call it. That way you can revert changes if you commit something that was bad and breaks your application to a point where you don't know how to fix it. <clears throat> and as your application scales up and you get another developer or two working on it, you can share them the private repository and then you can create features in parallel in a nice way that you're not stepping on each other's toes. Once you have all the code written and tested, everything's documented, you're sure the user experience is good, that people will leave good reviews and not ask for refunds. You wanna think through how you're gonna distribute your code. You could ship the raw code, like you could just check it into a public Python package or a Python like Git repository, and then you can tell people, go to the Git repository and feel free to download it. And you can use like a an open source mechanism where potentially you like sell support of your application or you just grow it as a big community because you like making code. But again, like I said earlier, if this has a business justification to make and could be sold, then I would just sell it because uh, as a developer, my time is kind of limited. If you create an application that saves me time, like if I go from uploading YouTube videos six hours a month to only doing it 30 minutes, you know, you save me five and a half hours, that time is worth anywhere between 150 to $450 to me. Therefore, I would pay up to $150 for that application if it had a good user experience. Uh, everything was well documented, all the things that I talked about earlier. Uh, you probably don't wanna put $150 for something that's a CLI. So if you put like a $20 price point on it and I'm spending $20 to get 150 or more worth of value, even more over the course of using this for a year, I'm definitely gonna buy that and it's worth something to distribute. So as I just point, as I just pointed out, if your application that you're working on that you are watching this video for is something that is likely to appeal to me, you know, leave something in the comments, let me know. Feel free to use that to talk about your application and just share something among other developers. Back to what I was talking about, once you've written your code and everything is good and you'd be confident shipping this to a customer. You want to compile it so that you protect your source code. You can use py2exe for that or pyinstaller. Personally, I don't know which one's better. I'm most likely going to just dig into both of them and do my software engineering process where I look at the pros and cons of both packages, uh, try downloading one or two of them and making an exe with both of them, figure out which one is actually simpler for the customer to use because ultimately you're making this for an end user and you want them to have a good experience with your application, that's the most important thing when you're like selling something to a customer is that they have a good, <laughs> is that they have a good time using it. Uh, and then once I've created one of those bundles, I've downloaded it, I know that it works well for me, then I'll go on to the next step of the process here. Uh, and lastly, you know, you've, you've came up with your idea, you've written the code, you've documented the code and you've bundled your code in a way that it can't be easily reverse engineered and stolen. Uh, you want to market and sell your application. Actually, I want to take a step back from something that I just said, uh, having your code stolen. Uh, when you're shipping your code, 
you'll be bundling in potentially API keys or some other way for people to interact with the code. And once they download it, there's nothing necessarily to stop them from copying and pasting it to all their friends in an email or whatever. If that's something you really want to avoid, because this is a very like specialized application that you put in a lot of work into, uh, you can think about other layers of security, such as shipping API keys on your own and creating a database in the back end to store those API keys. Like once two people try to register an API key, then it disables and then they can no longer interact with the app. Uh, like for instance, if your app starts up, it connects to a remote server to verify that the app is legal. And if it isn't, then shutting down the functionality. Uh, that's something you can look into on future iterations. Once your app has a bigger user base and you're more concerned with protecting the integrity of your app. Like if it's something that a lot of people would use, you don't want everyone to just use it for free. Unless of course you do want everyone to use it for free. Uh, that's your decision to make, but that is a potential where if someone's getting like an EXE compiled version of your application that they can just upload it to a website on their own and sell it on their own. If you want to stop them from doing that, you'll need to create more of a backend server and kind of database layers to check the ownership of the application. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about the distributions and the security, uh, the next step is marketing and selling your application. First, you'll want a sales page to be able to sell your app on. This will allow you to upload your app behind like a gate. Uh, the sales page can tell the user what value this provides to them and convince them a little bit more like why they want this. And you just saw a lightning flicker in the back, kind of have a storm going on right now. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's a good or a bad idea to record during a storm, but I'm doing it anyways. And again, the sales page can also serve as like a digital storefront to allow people to purchase your page even while you're sleeping. So that creates that passive income stream. If you have a following on social media, then definitely let them know about your application. Even like even further along in the process than when it's available for sale, so you can build up hype around it. Like you can send out a tweet or something like, hey, just had this great idea for an application. Uh, it's gonna knock your socks off and save you five hours a week checking your emails or going through all of your, your sales funnels or all that stuff. If, and as you keep sending out these tweets kind of every day, you know, you'll get a little bit more interest from your people following. And as long as it doesn't feel like it's a hard sale, if it's just like kind of you're excited about sharing this and you are confident that it does provide value, then your user base will respond to you probably pretty well. And you'll get some DMs like, hey, put me on a presale list or whatever. If you don't have a large social media following like me, since I don't really have that much time to, to tweet and Facebook as much as I wish I did for trying to build my Python brand, uh, you can create a Facebook business page for your application. And what this Facebook business page will allow you to do is create ads for your product. Uh, and you can create like an intro video that explains what your application is, what it does, how it will benefit the user. And then once you have that post on the page, you can then boost it or promote that share. And with that promotion, you are able to target specific people. So like in my case, where my application is gonna be towards people that upload YouTube videos to multiple channels, I can target it to content creators between like 25 and 35. I don't necessarily want to promote this to 16 year olds because they're likely not gonna have the money to purchase it. But maybe they are if they're big YouTubers. Again, that's kind of what my niche is, is like selling it to established YouTubers to save them time and running their channel. Then maybe just like everyone that is a content creator could potentially be my audience. If you're creating a YouTube ad, you might even be able to go further and say like, only present this ad to content creators that have more than 1,000 subscribers. So people that are monetized, people that are likely to see the value in this and purchase this. If your product is something that automates something for skateboarding, I, I don't know what it is, I'm just pulling this out of my head, then you can target people that are interested in skateboarding. Uh, Facebook normally has a pretty good idea of what you're in based on like what groups you're in, what your shares are about. They, they do a lot of tracking, which a lot of people are scared of, but I don't mind it because it makes my life simpler generally. <laughs> 
And as someone creating an application in a product, you can use that to your advantage as well to make sure the people that will get value from your application are the ones that see it. And then you can have them link through to your sales page and then they can click through and buy it. And again, you can do this all while you're sleeping. So it's more passive. If it does have a good community response, like a lot of people are kind of buying it, you know, you're getting consistent sales, then you can send out like a newsletter or whatever, or collect an email list of the people that buy it, send out an email to get their feedback and like, Hey, how's everyone enjoying the application? Do you have any kind of feedback for me? Uh, probably if you have a hundred people, maybe only one out of a hundred people will respond but that one person's feedback is super valuable and it will allow you to come up with more ideas to improve the application. And as you add more value into it and you get more recognition to your page and your service, you can scale the application indefinitely as long as it's like a broad niche. This is the process that I'm going to be using for creating my application and also selling it and marketing it ultimately. I'll let you all know how that goes in an update video. And I hope you guys can apply this to the way that you think about creating Python applications for you to sell. And if you do find value in this, please do like and subscribe and leave a comment kind of how you're going to use this process, what your application is and how it's going for you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.